Hello everyone, today we will be learning about the metals that react with acids and alkalis. So first we'll look at what these metals are. The aluminium, chromium and zinc. So these are the three metals that, are, that react with both acids and alkalis. Now they're called amphoteric substances because they have the ability to react with both acids and alkalis. So they're given the word the name amphoteric and it's important to remember this name amphoteric when it's reacting with an acid they produce hydrogen gas as a product as well as a solution of metal chloride or sulfate salt so in other words it also produces a salt which is usually a metal chloride or a metal sulfate now let's look at some complex ions here we have metal aluminium. Now the formula for its complex ion, in other words, its aluminium hydroxide ion, is Al, and you put the brackets on, put your OH, and then you put a 4 next to it. Because we have 4 aluminiums, it's going to have a charge of minus 1, as you can see. And again we have chromium, Cr, brackets open, put your OH in, you close your bracket and you put your 4 because there's going to be four OH molecules and then again it has a charge of one so in other words this is an anion. Zinc we have the same thing happening now this time zinc has a charge of minus two the complex ion for zinc has a charge of minus two. Now the ch um, complex ion for aluminium is called the aluminate ion. The com complex ion for chromium is called the chromate ion and for zinc it's called the zincate ion. You'll have to use these complex ions when you're writing your chemical equations. Let's take one example here. For example, the equation for the reaction of aluminium with sodium hydroxide is. So we'll first look at the reaction. We have aluminium reacting with sodium hydroxide and they produce water and our sodium aluminate um, ion and also hydrogen gas. Now to balance this equation, what you first do is put a 2 in front of our NaOH and this is because we have an excess of hydrogen ions in this side. So to balance our hydrogen ions, we need to put a 2 in, a, in front of the NaOH because it has a hydrogen and we also put a 2 in front of the H2O. Now this is because we have how many hydrogens here? We have 4 plus 2 which is 6. Now we do have 6 hydrogens on this side as well. Now, note that we have two sodiums here, so we have to balance the sodiums. So when you're balancing the sodiums, you need to put a 2 in front of the Na, so it becomes 2 Na. But now that means we're going to have two aluminiums as well. So to balance our aluminium, you would put a 2 in front of the aluminium. So now you have two aluminiums. But then our oxygens here aren't balanced. So to balance our oxygens, we have 4 times 2, which is 8 oxygens on this side. To balance the oxygens, what you do is you would put a 6 in front of the O here. We have 2, that gives us 2 plus 6, which is 8. Now our oxygens are balanced. Now we have to finish off by balancing our hydrogens. We have 12 hydrogens plus 2, which gives us 14 hydrogens. Now we already have 2 times 4, which is 8 hydrogens here. So by putting a 3 in front of the H2, we balance our hydrogens. And that's how you would go about balancing your um, equation for that. Now when you're writing your ionic equation, what you would do is you would take out the spectator ions. In this case, just look at this equation for the time being. You have sodium here already in a compound. And sodium here is also in a compound, which makes sodium here a spectator ion. Taking out the spectate ions, we just write our ionic equation. We have aluminium reacting with our hydroxide and water, giving us the two aluminate ions and also hydrogen gas. The balancing of the equation stays the same. So any balance or any coefficient you wrote here would go into our hydroxide ion and any coefficient you wrote for this compound here would go into our aluminate ion, as you can see. Now moving on, we'll just summarize the stuff, every information we learned in this topic. So 
the use of a particular metal are determined not only by the physical properties but also, but also their reactivity. So in this topic we learn mainly about reactivities of metals and we also learned how reactivity or its reactivity can benefit its use. So for example gold is so unreactive and therefore it is used mainly for jewellery. So we have gold and silver and also platinum quite unreactive and they do not undergo any corrosion which means that they're very corrosion resistant and very appealing at all times so they they never corrode and therefore always remains or retains its luster because these metals do not readily tarnish they retain their shiny luster and make them attractive metals so this is just summarizing how the reactivity would benefit the use of the metal now let's just look at some questions here we have question 20 write ionic equations for the reactions between the following the amphoteric metal chromium and potassium hydroxide solution so these are our two reactants we have chromium reacting with a hydroxide solution because potassium here is going to be a spectate ion we cancel it out and it's going to be in solution which means there's going to be water present so this is our ionic equation it's going to form a chromate ion as you can see here and also our hydrogen gas now when you're going about balancing it first you would look at how many hydrogens you have you have four hydrogens here and two hydrogens here which gives us six hydrogens but we only have three hydrogens on this side so you would put a two in front of the water and then a two in front of the OH ion now you would have six hydrogens on this side for the time being our hydrogens are balanced now let's look at it again we have two O's and two O's now let's just balance our oxygens to balance our oxygens you would just put a two in front of our chromate ion so you would get two oxygens two times four is eight and we have two which is two and we have two oxygens here that gives us four so our oxygens aren't balanced yet but we'll be working towards it now we have one chromate ion here which means one two chromiums but we only have two chromi one chromium here which means we have to double our chromium so you put a two in front of the chromium now what you do is we look at it again and we see that our hydrogens or our oxygens are not balanced yet so to balance our oxygens we just need more oxygens on this side so to gain our oxygens we can add six here well what we'll be doing is we'll be working with our water so if we put a six in front of our h2o now our oxygens are balanced but this unsettles our hydrogen balance so to balance our hydrogens we just work with the hydrogen gas here so that way it's safer so we have how many hydrogens on this side we have two plus the 12 from here which gives us 14 to balance our hydrogen you just simply put a 3 in front of the H2 so that gives us 6 hydrogens over here and we have 8 hydrogens over here so that gives us a total of 14 hydrogens on this side so that is how you would balance a chemical equation now part B you says the amphoteric metal zinc and the solution of sodium hydroxide now sodium hydroxide is a base so we have zinc reacting with the OH ions from the sodium hydroxide because the sodium is a spectate ion it gets cancelled out and there's going to be water present because it's in solution giving us our syncate ion which is 2 minus and our hydrogen gas again when you're uh, balancing this let's just look at what we have to balance we have to balance our hydrogens and our oxygens so in order to do that you just simply put your two hydroxides and two water so that'll balance our hydrogens and our oxygens and we're not going to do anything with our zincs because they're already balanced for us that's how you would go about balancing these two equations and you can see how you cancelled out your spectator ions that way it's easier moving to question 21 it says compare the products formed in the reaction of aluminium with hydrochloric acid and with a sodium hydroxide solution so you'd have to compare sometimes you may do this in a table but also you can write it as a paragraph 
Aluminium chloride is formed when aluminium reacts with hydrochloric acid. So aluminium chloride is formed when hydro uh, it reacts with hydrochloric acid. And AlCl3 is aluminium chlor chloride. So this is an ionic salt because this is a metal and this is a non-metal with aluminium acting as a trivalent cation because it has a trivalent, in other words, three valencies. Sodium aluminium hydroxide forms when aluminium reacts with sodium hydroxide. Now sodium aluminium hydroxide is also formed when this compound reacts with the sodium hydroxide. So we have sodium aluminium hydroxide, this is how you would go about writing it. We, ha we have an aluminate, um, aluminate ion joining with a sodium ion and that's how it's produced. It is a complex salt where aluminium forms as the anion, so this part is an anion with four hydroxy groups. So this is a four hydroxy groups. As you can see here, four, that's why it's called a four hydroxy group. When it reacts with the aluminium, it makes the aluminate ion. Now the aluminate ion reacts with the sodium. Remember that the aluminate ion has a valency of minus one and sodium has a valency of plus one. So it gives us Na, big bracket serpent, Al, the little brackets giving out OHs, four of them, and you would close your big, big bracket. This then acts like a polyatomic or a complex ion. In other words, this is a very complex ion or and it has different, in other words, polyatoms. It's made out of, out of different atoms. In both reactions, hydrogen gas is produced. Now you can see how they have compared the two. And they also given us what's similar about them and what's different. And that's very important with the word compare because this is a key word there. When it says to compare, you do have to name the similarities as well as the differences. So you may do it in a table, but if you have more information like here, it's easier to do in paragraph form. Now let's just wrap up what we have learned. We learned about metals that react with both acids and alkalis, and they're called amphoteric acids or amphoteric substances. Thank you.